Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pash On Podcast. Let's get started with your host, Brian Pash. Hi, this is Brian Pash, and today we have an exciting, groundbreaking podcast. I'm welcoming to the show Jocelyn Boudet. She is the founder of Stella Automotive AI. Jocelyn, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian. It's great to be here. You know, I've been in the automotive marketing and sales process business for 17 years. Every once in a while, there's a product that everyone talks about. I remember many years ago, a product called Haystack, which really got dealers' attention. Everyone was doing Google ads manually. And all of a sudden, this company, Haystack, said, look, we can integrate your inventory, do dynamic ads. And man, that company took off like a rocket. There's very few of these true disruptive products that everyone wants. And Stella is one of those products. Before we talk about Stella's application in automotive, I want to set the stage that for most auto dealers, scheduling service appointments, even though it's so critical, there's many broken pieces. Things can work good for a while and then somebody leaves or there's a new service director or the BDC turns over. And if we were really honest, we spend a lot of money on a very simple task, which is allowing our customers to book a service appointment. And today, I want you to expand your imagination. What if the majority of your service bookings could be done 24 seven in a highly customer centric way with high scores that reduces your operational costs, increases your customer satisfaction? What if it's ready today. What if this industrial grade product is available and turn on in your business in a few days? That's what we're going to talk about on today's podcast. So Jocelyn, before you came into the automotive space, you've been developing world-class AI solutions to help other automotive sectors and, and businesses deal with simplifying a booking process. How did it all get started? Thanks, Brian. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think uh, what we have is world-class technology and um, we brought it into automotive. We're really excited about it. But it, you know, in your opening statement, I couldn't agree more. When we talk about conversational AI on a telephone, you're talking about a very rare product um, and I would I would hearken to most people listening to the podcast, either book hotel reservations, flight reservations, they call Apple, they call Best Buy, they call Hewlett Packard for Inc. Um, and if you look across the world, you will not find fully automated conversational AI in any of those sectors. So I would say the most excited thing I'm, you know, for me to be here today. It's just um, that we brought it first to automotive, to retail dealers. Um, we saw a problem here. We knew we could solve it. We're super excited about the product. Uh, we're, we're really excited about the market response that we've been getting. And, you know, Jocelyn, what's so cool about it is that um, when you listen to calls, and I've listened to a number of them, you know, you're able to recognize an existing customer. You're able to recognize the vehicles that they want to service. You're able to recognize availability uh, in the dealer's booking schedule. So we have a totally integrated product that really comes off very, very smoothly. And we're going to make sure that we reference some places so people can listen to the conversations. But you mentioned coming into automotive, but this product has been up and running for years. What industries, what problems did it solve previous to you coming into automotive? Yeah, I'll tell you a little bit of our story is we started out in heavy equipment manufacturing, 
And um, we've been working in, you know, construction, mining, farming, uh, earth moving, uh, government, um, you know, heavy equipment areas. And we've invested a lot of time and energy building technology to help buy and sell parts. Uh, and the way that we do that is our product, Stella, is able to speak to a person and you can say, I need a POP for my 362D backhoe. <laughs> and she'll roll with that question, ask you which one you have, get your year make and model of that equipment and sort out exactly what part you need all conversationally. We deliver that over applications uh, for, and we're the provider of that technology on board at large corporations. Um, what was different is we came to right before uh, COVID, the lost years, uh, we attended the last NADA and I had met a few folks from automotive. They encouraged me to come to that event. We walked the floor. I was demoing this product, software product selling parts. And uh, up and down the aisles, met with, uh, you know, dealers, dealer groups, software companies, and uh, just showing this demo. And nobody was excited about parts. Most of 99% uh, of everybody said, that thing's talking. <laughs> and uh, asked me if it would work on phones. And I had people chasing me down at that show, trying to find me, ask me if I could help answer phones at auto. So uh, we listened, we pivoted, and we interviewed a bunch of dealers, and that's how we ended up here. Well, you know, depending on the dealership that I speak with, some are very honest, like Brian, yeah, we, we do a good job with 70% of the calls. Uh, some say, hey, Brian, it really depends. I thought others say we're nearly perfect, but whether that's a real estimate or not, uh, what we do know from the call management companies that have been at my conferences, that uh, upwards of 70% of inbound phone calls are mishandled and a high percentage end up in the voicemail pot. And of course, my service experience here in Florida is a perfect example of that. When I tried to service my Ford, when I first moved down here, uh, I left two voicemail messages, not a call back, ended up going to a different dealer. They lost my business and confidence at the same time after two attempts. So Let's talk about what you're seeing in the field. Um, at our recent conference at the Digital Marketing Strategies Conference, I talk with customers of Stella who are super happy. Some put Stella as the first line of defense and others use it as an overflow. So let's talk about that. What do you believe is the best position for Stella uh, in the call routing for service appointments in order to deliver those great scalable cost savings that all dealers are obviously focused on in today's economic environment? Well, I would say that Stella really isn't a phone system and doesn't have a place in a phone. She's actually your next hire. So if you're looking at just pure FTE phones, um, your next hire should be Stella. She's already trained. She's perfect every time. She never forgets, never misses, always answers, can answer unlimited phone calls simultaneously, doesn't call in sick, and uh, works 24-7. Well, that sounds like me. I mean, yeah. you, you, you phoned <laughs> me? That's so amazing. That's amazing. So in with that answer, Jocelyn, you would have full confidence if a dealer has a phone number on their website that says call to schedule your service. It shouldn't go to the BDC first. It should go right to Stella. hundred percent. Because um, first of all, I mean, the stats that you rolled off are absolutely accurate. We find that 32% of calls are just not even answered. Um, it, it's a disaster out there. And, you know, even the best companies we've met, you know, really professional people in dealer groups care passionately about their customers, care passionately about their brand. We usually when we first meet them, you know, we want people on the phone. We believe in human contact. We take care of our customers. I'm like, great. 
Um, but the problem is you put your best two people on the phone now that they're busy, who's next? <laughs> right. So you have right. no depth. You can't have an unlimited bench. Um, but the other thing is that Stella actually answers faster and helps faster. So statistically, we got to put it against a human experience. Um, Stella's going to get every data point, get through the call. She's simultaneously aware. So when you're talking to a human, you're talking to a linear, it's a linear conversation. First, I'm going to look up who you are. Then I'm going to look up who your service advisor. Then I'm going to look up and see if what your car is, how many miles on it. And, and those, um, those are what we call communication lags. <laughs> so if it, a human booked appointment um, in it, if you add the rings, and we're talking two minute, 15 second average hold time to get the human, um, uh, then does the appointment, it's still a six minute call. Um, you look at the comparison of self serve. Now, what do you like about self serve? Easy, fast, smart, saved me time. You know, you see ads in other industries. Well, that was easy. And that's what Stella is. You're, you're looking at a product that delivers 100% compliance and hangs up in one minute and, and rang once. So, um, and cost less. <laughs> so it's really just a no brainer. And we're not competing with humans. The way I would view it is you just freed up that super smart, awesome, trained person in your BDC. You freed them up to do outbound. You freed them up to handle more complex calls. Um, and uh, so I, I think that hopefully I made an argument for, but I, I really think Stella's first. Yeah. And so I've talked to dealers uh, about this topic. We just recently talked about this uh, whole conversation at the Automotive CXO Summit uh, the day before DMSC. And we have some doubters, Jocelyn. And, and here's, here's the question they asked. And I'm sure people who are listening to today's podcast are asking the same question. Um, all right, let's say Stella is the front line. That is the most efficient way to get people booked and off the phone. So they have a great experience and uh, I'm saving money. What percent of the calls, this is a two-part question, what percent of the calls uh, does somebody hit like a zero to uh, jump out of Stella to talk to a real person? And how many calls or what percentage can Stella not handle? Well, as in all answers, Brian, it, it depends. <laughs> and the reason why it depends is we have such a variety of dealerships using Stella. Um, there's no one rule. We certainly have um, you know, even high volume, like a, a Toyota in a sleepy area. And we have, um, you know, Ford's largest volume, second largest volume Ford in the world. And you're just talking about completely wildly different statistics. Um, we also, uh, we don't stipulate what lines point to Stella and some dealers, they have a, a service line posted on the, the website. Some dealers, uh, the upfront IVR is handling things in different ways. Um, and so it, it, the, it, there's no one rule, but what we can say is Stella does multiple things. She transfers calls. So she transfers by name, by department. She transfers Spanish speaking people. We can talk more about that, but when a call comes in, they may or may not want Stella. Um, so that's the first thing. And it depends. Some dealers put press three to book an appointment. And then Stella says, how can I help you? Some say press two for service. And Stella says, how can I help you? So we deal with, um, just think of uh, this, a true AI, like Alexa, or even your Siri on your phone. They don't, they don't count how many questions you, Jeff, Jeff Bezos doesn't count how many times you talk to, to Alexa. You can, you can ask her unlimited. So we, we're not counting calls. We're not counting. It's, we're not count, counting transfers. It's a true AI. And so when that call comes in, we just deal with it. I think a lot of dealers were seeing anywhere from 400 calls coming into Stella to several thousand it's a pretty wild distribution. And then you're looking at ratios of transfer calls can be 60% transferred or it can be 
10% transferred, 90% on Stella because they put it on the service. And the other thing is it varies by time of day because in the nighttime, a lot of the calls are about service. So um, I'm sorry to say it's it's not such an easy black and white answer. Well, Jocelyn, I, I, I'm glad that you took the time to answer that because I think the truth is uh, that there are many different ways to configure uh, a routing into Stella from what I can tell from some of the customers that are using your platform uh, that they felt that, you know, maybe 90% of the calls Stella handled and uh, maybe 10% of the people opted out, which to me was pretty amazing because uh, at the end of the day, I think the technology as I've uh, listened to it is really quite cool. And you mentioned the average (laughs) Uh, two minutes and 15 seconds on hold waiting to get a service advisor. That is so true. And lately the airlines have been driving me crazy. Uh, I've had a number of, you know, flight cancellations or flight changes. And even though I'm at the top of their frequent flyer program, um, the wait times have been really uh, unproductive. and, and Yeah, it's aggravated. shocking. It's shocking. And, you know, I have to say it's been quite a pleasure to bring, I would say, worldwide front edge telephone technology, an AI that speaks on a telephone. And just for an example, if you ask, if you try to have a dialogue with Siri, how long will that be? It's (laughs) not there. Right. So what, what is the top movie today and when is it playing and what's the best one and what are the ratings? You can't do that. Each one is a separate question. So we're talking about a very advanced dialogue system um, that's semantic based, that's uh, logical, smart, understands what it's doing, knows what it's talking about. Um, it knows when it when it asks you, how can I help you? It knows most of the things you could do at a dealer and it deals with it. I mean, it's an incredible open-ended question for an AI. How can I help you? Uh, and then even on the appointment side, you're talking about 20 separate points of logic that that full dialogue will run through with no human supervision. Any other product out there is supervised. Supervised means humans listening in on the back end. This thing is unsupervised, fully automated, industrial strength, and scalable. So let's talk about um, features, because uh, as I've talked to dealers about this breakthrough technology, um, they ask me questions. So let's get them out and answered. Um, Somebody calls in for a service. Are you aware of the car's status? Like uh, if there's an open recall, would Stella say, and by the way, I can see that your car has an open recall. Would you like to have the recall fixed at this time? So where are you with uh, the ability to know about recalls? We have um, engaged with one of the industry providers of recall data, and we have access to recall data. And for any given dealer, we can deploy for recall. And uh, the policies and procedures vary. Um, as everybody knows, the challenge with recall is parts. And so we are able and flexible to work with dealers on how they want to handle the rules around parts. Um, or if there is a recall, I think the default now is just to transfer and talk to a live agent. Okay. Um, and that's great because that's, you know, obviously the reality of booking service appointments The other reality is some customers want to stay in the lounge, some need a rental car. Um, If I'm booking and I needed a rental car, is Stella going to ask me uh, if I'm staying or I need a rental car? And if I say, yes, I need a rental car, what happens next? She'll book, she'll, she can accommodate rental cars, shuttle, uh, Uber, uh, drop off and waiter. And she is intelligent about that and flags the appointment. So she gathers the data and injects it into the appointment so that the dealer has the data of what the customer wants to do. 
Most of the dealers uh, have special slots for those, uh, especially for loaner cars. And Stella is aware of what slots are available and can also apply rules to those. Um, the other thing Stella is really good at, Brian, is understanding op codes. Um, so natural language is, is just a beautiful thing. Uh, but uh, if you go to a digital site, like uh, to a website and try to use the digital booking tool, um, it's a very strange thing when you start go to describe what you're bringing your car in for. You get a very bizarre drop down that a normal person wouldn't be used to or understand necessarily. Um, where Stella is fully trained on the different types of repairs and understands natural language. So um, I need a new windshield wiper, make a, you know, do you want to go to parts? <laughs> uh, I, I, I need a, 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 my battery and, and being able to choose the correct opt code and understand what that customer's coming in for. And that's how we're able to correlate that to different um, loaners available or not. Obviously, no loaners on an oil change uh, at most dealers. So right. um, rules like that are things we can accommodate. Well, you you opened up a little uh, Pandora's box here. You mentioned parts. Um, you're doing parts in the OEM heavy equipment with, you know, hundreds of thousands of parts uh, that Stella knows about and can recognize. Is there something on the roadmap? Because I have a few customers that do millions of dollars of parts online, and I'm wondering if they would be, uh, you know, also interested in uh, doing some of this natural language uh, part ordering. You know, obviously you have body shops that are local that dealers provide parts for uh, giving 24 seven ability for their local body shops to call and order parts. That would be really cool. Where are you in your thought process or was your NADA experience saying, hey, it's not worth the effort because not too many dealers see that as a viable next step. Well, I think dealers were definitely interested. It was just the violence of the interest in the telephone. I've never experienced <laughs> it. <laughs> um, so I, I was, I, you know, I guess we're going to build something for some telephones for these people because it was loud and clear. Um, on the parts side, I would say we have the, probably the, the best parts AI in the world. Um, in order to deal with parts, you need to be able to handle part numbers, part descriptions, um, and use natural language. But I want to say that part of the reason why we were able to build such a, a hardened and industrial strength dialogue system for booking was because of parts, because you... Um, you have p humans, especially customers, don't use the words that are in the database. There's a thingy making a sound, <laughs> right? What right. do you do with, you know, I, there's a strange knock. I don't know. Maybe it's in, you know, it's just you're gathering, um, you know, data. And when we're over in parts, that's where we've really invested a lot of time in other industries in understanding how people describe parts. And usually the problem with parts on the parts lookup is getting which part they, they were referencing. The other problems involved with that are parts are usually part of parts kits. Um, and you know they have different SKUs for different years. So um, one of the OEMs told me it's almost cheaper to make a new part than find one. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, so, I will yeah. tell you that there's some truth to that because um, early on when I started my marketing company, and we're talking 2005, uh, probably 2008, uh, I, I started working with some dealers who were doing online parts back in the wild, wild west of, of Google ads. And those websites were so clunky and horrible. Like I, you really almost should be giving trophies out when people completed an order, if they were able to find the parts and get it right. Um, Jocelyn, I have uh, another question that uh, just came up out in my visit to LA. Dealers wanted to know, um, is Stella fl fully fluent and able to do conversational commerce in Spanish? Where, where are you in supporting something other than English? 
That's in our roadmap for sure. Uh, we have uh, several customers, uh, large groups in Florida and California, um, and actually in the Manhattan area that have all, you know, specified that uh, Spanish is needed. Um, but the first thing that we did is we made extra sure uh, the product is incredibly good at speaking with people, non-native English speakers. So the Hispanic accent, Stella does an awesome job, almost flawless. And then, um, in the, and then we also do a good job of identifying if somebody wants to speak Spanish, Stella is able to transfer the person directly to the designated staff members who speak Spanish. So we've handled that. So we've been addressing it. But the obvious next step is to deliver the full Stella experience in Spanish. And I think we'll have that out before year end, Brian. Well, that's great news. So Jocelyn, I'd like to also ask tactical questions so people understand um, how quickly they could solve some of their problems. So let's just say a dealer uh, is currently using X time and that's what they've been having on their website. And that's the software platform that they use. And, they, and they're listening to us because X time is in a lot of places. Also uh, the CDK service schedule will probably be, maybe that's number two. I don't know, but um, let's just use X time dealers. And I'm tired of chasing people around to fill my BDC um, I am looking for a wow experience for my brand promise in the local market. And they call you up and say, I'm an X-Time customer. I want Stella installed. What is that installation slash training slash configuration look like for an average dealer? Sure. So we have a, uh, we've had a few brands that were, or groups where a dealer on a few of the dealers came on on X time and then the rest of the group just went nuts. And uh, we, we've we been, you know, we're racing to get their everybody's scheduler API in. <laughs> so um, the wow experience is 100 percent on um, at all X time deployments of. Uh, going exceptionally well, CDK uh, rolling out and more coming. And I would say that the wow experience is is beyond real because they're lining up. We have a wait list, which is awesome. Um, as far as uh, the uh, uh, the way the dealers, you know, we, we had one group, they put five dealers on, we, we went live on a Friday they wanted to test it over the weekend. They came in Monday. They had 180 appointments Monday morning booked. Done. Like it, it's not a, you know, we we had initially this idea, well, I don't know if my customers will like AI. <laughs> right. And you just get disabused of that uh, because when it deploys, it's just take, it's peeling phone calls off and making it possible for you to answer your phone. It, it, it's peeling off high volumes and, and then it's totally handling 24 seven. So um, I would say that, um, you know, most dealers when they deploy know within a day or two that this is it. Mm -hmm. uh, we, yeah. we, we find the, the cognition is instant. And, um, and then we, you know, we've had some brands, we, we put one brand up in the Southeast. Um, it was in a dealer group. It was the first dealer on, and then they went to a brand meeting and demoed it. And then we got like 80 calls from that brand. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, listen, um, I would just is, say it's been a really big wow experience. Then we're thrilled with the market response. Um, and I, as you're telling me this story, uh, you said something about, you know, freeing staff up for those, those maybe. Oh, oh, I think Jennifer unmuted herself. Jennifer did something. Okay, so Jennifer's back. Okay, so I'm gonna read, Connor, I need you to edit, let me clap. Okay, Connor, just cut this piece out and uh, I'm gonna ask the question. So Jocelyn, as you're telling me that story, something jumped out of my mind. I meant to ask you, and this was this idea of Stella allows the dealership staff to answer the phones, but there's more critical things. Um, and then, I thought of the dealers who use service texting products 
that, um, you know, when the car is ready, they send out a text and then they cancel the product. <laughs> and then they get this flood of calls of people who are asking, is my car ready? Is my car ready? And, and I've seen this because we do marketing analysis and we wonder why there's these weird spikes in, in Google ads campaigns uh, with phone calls. So I forgot to ask this question. Does, is there anything in the roadmap where uh, in, let's just say a phone tree, if someone says, hey, uh, do you want to check on the status of your car, press three. And could Stella pick that up and uh, see if the car is done? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think that where there's data, there's Stella. So is if that they're, a if they're populating a field to say the car's ready, <laughs> then Stella can know it. And then Stella, of course, could answer that question. Wow. Wow. That is so good. Just because not only do we know a lot of people call for service? So if a dealer buys their own name, the majority of those calls are for service. But as you break out the reason for those calls, uh, depending on whether the dealer is using a service texting tool to allow people to know their car's done, come on and get it. Um, if dealers avoid that investment, then their phone gets bombarded. So that's another great, great opportunity. Yeah. And you're looking at, you know, for an AI, it's ideal is to handle repetitive processes. It's to handle the easy, low hanging fruit that's sucking up all your resources and um, really just de-risk and um, deliver it. And the customers want it. They want it fast when they get it fast and it's smart. They're happy. It, it's a good brand alignment um, where you look at um, where there's a high number of calls over a certain intent or topic, that's a perfect area for an AI. Um, complex problems like quoting, discussing options with somebody, selling them service packages, um, that, that's much better done by a human. And so I think, you know, we, we get to work together. And, um, but I'd say the main area, Brian, for, you know, our, our, our next step is really on the front end and helping book uh, sales, sales appointments. Well, uh, that's, definitely something that I would encourage you to invest in because as we go to more consumer direct marketing or even the advent of just reducing our overhead costs to be more operationally efficient, anything we could do, as you mentioned, to automate and reduce the costs associated with these repetitive tasks makes sense. I am so uh, pleased, Jocelyn, that we had the opportunity to talk about Stella. Um, this is a whole new class of, of product coming to the automotive industry. It's surely catching people's attention. If somebody wanted to get a demo of Stella, what's the website? What's the best place for them to get that set up? StellaAutomotive.com. And I can't thank you enough for offering a long format um, uh, dialogue for for vendors. I, and I, I just think it's really hard to say something in five minutes or less, which is what we mostly get in the marketplace. And so I just want to acknowledge you for putting together a show where you can do, dive in a little bit and noodle around. And I did listen to a lot of your other shows and it, it's just a pleasure to meet the vendors and I can't thank you enough. Well, that's the whole idea of this podcast because uh, I try to put myself in the seat of the dealer. What would a dealer want to know? What problems are these companies solving for the dealer? Um, where's the thought leadership? What does the future look like? And I couldn't be more excited to see this solution come to an area of the automotive industry that we know is been plagued with inefficiency, plagued in poor customer experience. And any student of automotive retail now knows one thing, that the changes that are coming to automotive retail are because the OEMs want to clean up the brand experience. They want to align the needs of consumers with the services that they provide. And everyone 
everyone can agree that time is the most valuable commodity. So making it faster and easier for someone to buy a car or service a car is aligned with what um, the marketplace wants. And of course, the OEMs want as well. And Stella is one of those products. Jocelyn, I look forward to seeing the growth of the product and updates we have coming up in November, the Modern Retailing Conference. I know the Stella team will be there. That's November 13th, 14th, and 15th in Palm Beach. I wanna encourage dealers to check out modernretailingconference.com. This year, we're expanding the conference with an HR track, a creative track led by Paul Daly and Kyle Moncier. We're gonna have a sales process track. And of course, this falls into sales process in the, in the service side. We're gonna be having a uh, modern retailing focus and this time really cover all the areas of the business that need to come together to create a modern retailing experience. So for the dealers and the vendors, um, the show is going to sell out. So please go to modernretailingconference.com. Get your tickets now. Book your hotels. Remember, the Napa Valley Hotel sold out three or four weeks before the conference. People had to stay all over the place. Don't miss the experience staying at the beautiful O Hotel and Resort in Palm Beach. And Jocelyn, will you commit to me that by November, uh, you'll be able to share with the attendees all of your latest updates with Stella. Yes, I'll have some very interesting statistics to talk about. Uh, we see some early ones now, and I think with the volume of dealers coming on, um, we'll have a lot to say about what's going on on the telephones. And um, my marketing person tells me Stella is for all dealers with phones. <laughs> well, I think that would be 100%. So, all right, <laughs> we, you've set the bar, 100% sales <laughs> penetration. Well, I want to thank everyone who's listening to today's podcast. And if this is the first time you've listened, make sure you look up the Brian Pash podcast on your Apple podcast channel, Google Play, or Brian Pash dot. Oh, gee, how come I? Oh, let, okay. Uh, uh, Connor, let's uh, start that closing line one more time. I just had a brain freeze there. <laughs> Okay. I'm going to say dot AI, Brian. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I almost did. I almost did. All right. Here, here we go, Connor. If this is the... <clears throat> boy, I was doing good until the end. Here we go. All right, Connor, one more time. If this is the first time you're listening to one of my podcasts, make sure you check out all the previous shows with industry leaders, innovators, and groundbreaking technology. You can go to your Apple podcast channel, Google Play, or go to the native website, brianpash.libsyn, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. You'll find a treasure trove of amazing conversations like we had today. Thank you, Jocelyn, once again, and I'll see everyone next time on another podcast session.